Uncle, can you can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> I raised this one for him. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Pay homage to the Blessed One. Dear friends, today May 1st, 2023 at Dhammasuka Meditation Center. So I like to deliver Dhamma talk from Majjhima Nikaya Sutta number 52 Attaga Nagara Sutta. Sutta number 52 Attaga Nagara. So in this Sutta you will see the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, the base of infinite space, compassion, the base of inf infinite consciousness, joy, mudita, and the base of uh, nothingness, equanimity, upekka. So all those things explain very step by step, step by step. Okay. So I'm going to uh, read the sutta first, and then I will explain one by one. Okay. And then, of course, I also give some comment about my practical experience. So, thus have I heard on one occasion, the Venerable Ananda was living at Veluva Gamaka near Visali. So, when you read the Sutta, you will see at the beginning, thus have I heard, thus have I heard. Who said that? Venerable Ananda. Venerable Ananda, where did he say? Why did he say? We have to know that. So when the, the black Buddha was, um, he announced that, okay, I am going to pass away after three months. So that time, the who didn't attain Arahanship, they were crying. And then one monk, his name is Subhadda. So when he, he was old, he got ordination, high ordinations. He didn't learn about the discipline rules very well. And even Dhamma, he, he doesn't know. So when everyone was crying, and he said, why are you going to cry? This is the good things that Buddha is going to pass away, he already announced. If he passed away, then we can do whatever we want. <laughs> you know, so then Venerable Mahakasapa, he was the leader of the Sangha. And he said, what he's talking about? The Buddha taught us Dhamma and Vinaya. So Dhamma means the, you know, the truth, the, all the suttas, Buddhas, Dhamma talk, we call Dhamma. So, and the Vinaya means the 227 rules, discipline rules. So, Venerable Upali, he was very skilled about the Vinaya, but he attained a Rahanship. And Venerable Ananda, he could memor he memorized all the Dhamma. You know? So when Venerable Mahakasapa heard that word from the Subhadda, we have to purify Dhamma and Vinaya. Then when Buddha passed away and he called the first Buddhist council and he said we have to be one place and that first Buddhist council all monks, especially 500 monks, must be present and everyone will be arahan. 
no if someone don't attend arahan not allow everyone must be arahan in the first buddhist council but venerable ananda must be present he didn't attend arahan he attend only stream mantra sutapanna and mahakasapa said okay venerable ananda must attend there and venerable upali must attend there and venerable upali already got enlightenment he already attained arahanship but venerable ananda no and even mahakasapa didn't tell him okay you must practice meditation hard from today and then you attain arahanship he didn't say that venerable ananda was thinking okay my senior monk mahakasapa said i have to be there but i eat in only stream mantra so what i have to do i have to practice meditation and whole day he practiced meditation whole night he practiced meditation tomorrow will be the first buddhist council and he was thinking that you know whole day i practice meditation and whole night he was so tired you know he is i don't have maybe i will not be able to attain arahanship so he was very mindful and slowly 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 because he's he's going to sleep he's so tired you know slowly very mindfully touching his head with the pillow then immediately he attained arahanship you know then he was thinking that how can i show the other monks that i ate in arahanship so everybody present only one chair empty so everybody looking when he is coming when he is coming you know so by using his psychic power and he was there and all the arahants they say sadhu 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 you know and then mahakasapa said venerable ananda please recite dhamma then venerable ananda said evam me sutang does have i heard you see here in pali evam me sutang does have i heard at the beginning venerable ananda said because whenever buddha went different places for giving dhamma talk ananda was close to him ananda was the attendant of the buddha and ananda said bhante i want i i can be attendant of you but i have some terms and condition so what terms and condition so whenever you go out for preaching for giving dhamma talk you have to take me number 1 and number 2 if you don't take me there when you come back so what dhamma talk you give there you have to again give dhamma talk to me after coming here so there are many many terms and conditions he gave actually so buddha said okay that's fine yeah i accept it your conditions so that's why ananda he knew all the dhamma and he recited the first buddhist councils at the beginning he said evam me sutang does have i heard so this is the first buddhist council said by the venerable ananda so here again we are talking about venerable ananda experience so venerable ananda is talking here in this sutta when one householder went to him and asked him venerable ananda could you tell me what the buddha taught and then he explains about his all experiences venerable ananda experiences all the jhanas step by step step by step so now on that occasion the householder dasama of anath attakanagara so attakanagara is the place and householder dasama is the name of a lay person 
arrived at Pataliputta for some business or other. So householder, he was very religious guy. He met, he knew about Ananda before. So he wanted to listen to Dhamma talk more, more from Venerable Ananda. So then he went to a certain monk in Kukuta Park and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and asked him, you know, whenever any senior monk like here today, when I am coming, all of you with the left and right hand respectfully, you honor me, you respect me. And then when the teacher come and who have uh, sadda, sadda means the confidence, you know, the respect. So he always, after paying homage to him, and he sat close to him. It's like that. So the householder, after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and asked him, where does the Venerable Ananda live now? Venerable Sir, I wish to see the Venerable Ananda. The Venerable Ananda is living at Viluva Gamaka near Visali householder. So he went to any monks and then he asked him, he said, okay, he's living that place, Pataliputne near Visali. When the householder Dasama has completed his business at Pataliputta, he went to the Venerable Ananda as Vil Viluva Gamaka near Visali. After paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and asked him, Venerable Ananda, has any one thing been proclaimed by the Blessed One who knows and sees, accomplished and fully enlightened, wherein if a monk abide diligent, ardent, and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, and his undestroyed taints come to be destroyed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So this is the question. Okay? So Householda Dasama asked the Venerable Ananda, and Venerable Ananda is going to answer now. He said, yes, householder, one such thing has been proclaimed by the Blessed One. Now Venerable Ananda is going to explain the first jhana. So the householder said, what is, the, what is that one thing, Venerable Ananda? So before going to explain the first jhana, I want to explain the, what is the meaning of the jhana. We have to understand that first. What is the meaning of jhana? So jhana means state of meditation. Okay? So jhana means state, state of meditation or level of understanding. Okay? So you just remember that. So now Venerable Ananda is going to explain the first jhana. Here householder, quite secluded from sensual pleasure, secluded from unwholesome states, a monk enters upon and abides in the first jhana, which is accompanied by thinking and examining thought with joy and a happiness born of seclusions. So this is the first jhana explanation. So how do you understand you attend the first jhana? And what is the meaning of jhana? You already know that. The stage of meditation or a level of understanding. And when you attain the first jhana, and how will you know you already attain the first jhana? So the, my, our, my friend, his name is, I think, what is your name? Your name? Yeah, Karunananda. Yeah, so you should not. Okay, so he requested me, Bhante, when you explain um, five hindrances. I couldn't come a uh, little bit early, so I missed something. Could you explain? He requested me. I told him, okay, when I'll go to 
and uh, to, after tomorrow I'll, I'm going to give Dhamma talk and I'll explain. So here are the five hindrances. So the, my last talk I explained one thing you have to know the what are the five hindrances another thing you have to know the six hours okay so these two things you have to keep in your mind then this meditation is very simple and very easy to understand so what are the five hindrances pancha nivarana pancha means five nivarana means hindrances so number one kama sanda sensual desire so through the six senses sensual desire rise in your mind when you meditate okay so eye ear nose tongue body and mind so through the se six senses the sensual desire rise when sensual desire rise you use the heart six hours there okay number two aversion hatred or ill will. So when you meditate, you are practicing, practicing. In the past, you were quarreling with your wife, with your husband, or maybe with your family members, or with your friends, you know. So all those thoughts is arising in your mind. Use the harmony, uh, harmonious practice, the six hours there. And number three, sleepiness and dullness. In the book, you can find slot and topper. I use sleepiness and dullness because this is very easy and easy word for me. Okay? So when you meditate, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you feel sleepy. You know? And then you feel again sleepy. Tina amidda. Tina means sleepiness and dullness. Midda means dullness. Okay, I should not practice today, 10 minutes and a half. Tomorrow, I'll practice one hour. Today, 10 minutes and a half. This is dullness, you know? But if you do that, and when you come back tomorrow, again, you feel sleepy, sleepiness, dullness, and then you'll say, okay, tomorrow, I'll sit two hours, today and a half. <laughs> So this is the hindrances. Sleepiness and dullness will arise in your mind. Use the six words there. And number three, two, three, four. Four, uddasa kukucha. Uddasa means restlessness. Your mind go here, there, here, there, running everywhere like monkey. You know? Uddasa kukucha means anxiety. I want to keep my mind one place. Hey, you should listen to me. But mind never listen to you. Hindrances should not rise in my mind. But it's still arising. You know? Okay. My meditation is very good. I am in the first genre now. Okay. Hindrances, hindrances should not rise. But it still arise. So you feel anxiety. Why I cannot keep my mind one place? Anxiety rise. Kukucha. Eh, sorry. Uh, Uddasa kukucha, yes. Kukucha. It means anxiety. So use the six hours that moment. And then last one is doubt. So here at Dhammasuka Meditation Center, uh, we, I become Samanera, novice. My mind is very pure. I am practicing meditation now, you know. Even though I get ordination, novice ordination, my mind is pure. But what Delson is teaching at is not right. <laughs> what Bhante Satchananda is teaching may be not right. You know, doubt rise. What Buddha said in the Sutta may be not, that is not right. What I am practicing, this is not the right way. When such a doubt arises in your mind, use the six hours there. Five hindrances clear? Right? So, these five hindrances you must know at the beginning. And then six hours. Then you will understand 
how this meditation is too easy and very simple not so difficult okay and now we are going to know what is the characteristic of the first jhana so i am going to say in pali first and then tr translation okay savitaka savichara savitaka means thinking thought savichara examining thought savitaka savichara piti means joy sukha happiness and unification of mind ekagata so how many how many how many factors did you get it five right savitaka thinking thought savichara examining thought and then priti joy ha and then sukha happiness and ekagata unification of mind so when these five dhamma five factors will arise in your mind one by one one by one one by one five hindrances is not, not there you are in the first jhana clear first jhana any question yeah question yeah thinking and examining mind can you explain that a little bit thinking is when you meditate i am not asking you should not ask this question <laughs> <laughs> This is the wholesome, something wholesome. Sa, I say sa vitakka. Sa means wholesome. Sa vichara is also wholesome there. So, because your thinking is the wholesome, you know that unwholesome is not rising. Your thinking is then the wholesome. Okay? And then you know that thinking thought and examining thought. So you know, okay, this is the wholesome, this is the unwholesome. You can, you can understand that, okay? You can differentiate. This is unwholesome thought, this is the wholesome thought. Okay, I have to develop the wholesome one. Thinking and examining thought, it, it works very fast, okay? So you have to think. When you meditate and you, when your mind is very sharp and very clear, you'll know it. This is not something unwholesome. This is the wholesome. That's why I say sa. Sa vitakka means wholesome. Sa vichara, also wholesome there. So five hindrances not there. So you know all the, what are the five hindrances? Sensual desire, aversion, sleepiness and dullness, restlessness, anxiety, and doubt not arising in your mind. So what are arising? Thinking thought, examining thought, joy, happiness, and unification minds. These five dhamma, five truth, when present, you are in the first jhana. Any question? First jhana? Yes. Yes. Uh, where in the suttas does it say that unification of mind is in the first jhana? Yeah. Is this sutta Majjhimene Kaya? That's why I was looking that the sutta is is called the Salayatana Vaga, the Salayatana, Salayatana. So in the sutta, I'll show you tomorrow morning because I have to take a look at. It's very specifically mentioned the five factors: Savitaka, Savichara, Piti, Sukha, Ekagata. So Ekagata, these five factors will arise one by one, one by one. When you manage very sharp, it will arise very quickly. Quickly, okay? Then you, you know that five hindrances is not absent, then you are in the first jhana. Right? Yes? What does unification of mind mean? Is that the collection? Your mind is into one place. One place. It's called Ekagata in Pali. Ekagata. Okay. So, you, the first jhana very clear, right? So here, what the Venerable Ananda said about his experience, he said here, householder, quite secluded from sensual pleasure, this is, unwhole, this is the hindrances, right? Secluded from sensual pleasure, secluded from unwholesome state, so your mind is wholesome, sa, wholesome. Among, enters upon and avoids in the first jhana, 
which is accompanied by thinking and examining thought with joy, happiness and unification of mind. So what is the difference between joy and happiness? This question actually many, many students ask me. When I, when I was teaching in New York, different places, they asked me again and again, again and again. What is the difference between joy and happiness? So when you attain the first jhana, you know, you radiate loving kindness to yourself. How will you radiate? Even some people that don't know how to practice loving kindness, meditation. Remember a time when you were happy. So I ex my explanation is a very easy way. What is your name? Bhavarananda. Bhavarananda is my friend, right? He is my friend. And then when I was talking with him, I smile with him. We talk different things, you know. Then sometimes we laugh, sometimes we smile. So I smile with him. When I meditate, and I remember my friend, uh, when, I, when I was talking with him, I smile with him. So that smiling brings up the center of my chest. When I feel the center of my chest, warm and glowing feeling, then I radiate loving kindness to myself. Ten minutes, not more than that. Why is this one going down? I don't know. Huh? You always go down. I <laughs> Can you hear? Yeah, is it okay now? Can you hear me? No, it's fine. Monkey? Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, then the brain at the center of my smiling, not his smiling. Because I'm, I'm going to radiate loving kindness to myself. So my smiling, and then brain at the center of myself. And when I feel warm and glowing feeling, the center of my chest. And then I start radiating loving kindness to myself. May I be happy. May I be calm. May I be peaceful. May I be full of joy. May I be content and so on. Just radiate loving kindness to yourself 10 minutes. So that time, you must feel it. This is the feeling and a smiling meditation, the last talk I said. So keep smiling whenever you meditate. You know, don't bring all tension from your home to here. You know, so all the time you're smiling and you feel it, how you, your radiation is going to yourself. 10 minutes only, not more than that. So after 10 minutes, and I remember my friend is smiling. So when he, he talked with me, you know, he has smiled too, right? And then I remember his smiling. How did he smile? And he's smiling because I'm going to radiate loving kindness to my spiritual friend. He's my spiritual friend, right? And then I'm remembering he's smiling. Okay, my friend is smiling like this, ha, ha, ha or maybe slowly, okay? And then bring up his smile in the center of my chest. And then I feel warm and glowing feeling. Then I radiate loving kindness to my friend. M my friend be, may my friend be happy. May my friend be calm. May my friend be peaceful. May my friend be full of joy. May my friend be content and so on. You will see how your radiation is going to, to a spiritual friend. You feel it. Okay? This is the feeling. You have to feel it. And you will see how your radiation is going to him. So during that time, when a hindrance arises, then use the sixers that moment. Okay? that moment. Then you will see that hindrances is not rising for one few seconds, maybe one minute. Okay? Then thinking, thought, examining thought, joy, happiness and unification of mind arise 
one by one, then you are in the first jhana. So as I said, what is the different? What is the main uh, difference between the joy and happiness? So when you attend the first jhana, if you're so excited, oh man, this is really work. This meditation is really good. I feel something different than before. You feel so excited. This is the joy. And then, when you feel comfortable, you feel it will be light. You know, body and mind, you feel so light, comfortable. This is happiness. So you got it a bit in the, the difference of happiness and the joy, right? And then akagata one pointedness, your mind into one. So when these five dhamma, five the characteristics arise in your mind, you are in the first jhana. So here and then the Venerable Ananda said, he considered this and understand it thus. The first jhana, the first samatha and vipassana jhana. You see, samatha means tranquility. He said first, samatha and vipassana jhana. Sama, first, tranquility and insight, state of mind is conditioned and intentionally produced. But whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject subject to cessation. So it arises and then cease, rising and passing away. But he is steady in that. He attains the distractions of the taint. This is what I said in my last talk. You see, when you attain the first jhana, you have potential to attain Nibbana. Here the Sutta said. What it is, he said here, if he is steady in that, in the first jhana, he attained the distractions of the taints Nibbana. You have potential to attain Nibbana at that stage. If you practice continuously, if you are too lucky, you have law, you did a lot of perfections in the first life. One, two, three, and then you attain Nibbana there. This is what the Sutta said here. This is not my explanation. Don't blame me, okay? <laughs> but he doesn't attain the distractions of the taints because of that desire for the Dhamma. If you have little bit desire, you, you will not be able to attain the Arahan, Nibbana that delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower feathers, he becomes one due to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes and there attain the final Nibbana without ever returning from that world. What does it mean? If you don't attain Nibbana, that stage, you will reborn, you will attain Anagami you will be anagami, non deterner When you die, then you reborn in the pure abodes, Suddhavasa, in the Brahma world. Who is the Lokananda? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go Suddhavasa? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Brahma world, Brahma Loka, there is one, one, one realm we call Suddhavasa. So when you attain Anagami, when you have little bit desire, so you will not attain Nibbana. You will reborn the Suddhavasa realm. And over there, when you practice meditation continuously, you will attain Nibbana over there. You need to come back again, human world, again to practice meditation at Dhammasuka, you know. Right? You will be there. So that's why the, the Venerable Ananda said here. This is what the Buddha said actually, what he heard from the Buddha. Same things he is going to explain to the householder. Then with the distractions of the... Okay, this one is done. This is the one thing proclaimed by the Blessed One who knows and sees, accomplished and fully enlightened. 
wherein if a monk abides diligent, ardent and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undistrayed tends come to be distrayed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So this is the first jhana explanations. It's become clear, right? First jhana. So now we are going to uh, he's going to explain the second jhana. So here again with the stealing of thinking and examining thought, a monk enters and avoids in the second jhana which has self-confidence and stillness of mind without thinking and examining thought with joy and happiness born of collectedness. So here when you attain the second jhana and how will you know, how will you understand? The same things here all hindrances will not be there, will hindrances stop rising Thinking and examining thought will not arise. So how many, what, what do you have? Joy, happiness and unification of mind. So thinking and examining thought stop rising. Hindrance is not there. But you have joy, happiness and unification of mind. You attain third jhana, oh, sorry, second jhana. So when you attain the second jhana, you will have the self-confidence. This meditation is really working. What I am doing, I am the right track. So such a confidence. Okay, could you sit nicely please? Because when the monk gives Dhamma talk, you cannot sit like that. And we, we have the offense, especially the speaker. When the audience sit like this, you know. I am not too strict about the Bhante, Bhante is so too strict. <laughs> but anyway, so this is the, we have the 227 rules. When monks give the Dhamma talk and then when people say like this, then we have the problem, right? <laughs> crossing the line, please don't cross the line. Yeah, so this is the, actually, like we have, like yeah. This. yeah. So especially for the monks, um, we, we have the Dhamma Vagga, the Dhamma Desana Vagga. So we have 10 rules. So that rules, you know, when we give the Dhamma talk, we have to follow all those things. So if there are any people sit like that, then we commit, we have the offense. You are fine, but the speaker have the offense. <laughs> you know, so that's why we have to tell, we have to tell you that. Okay, so you have the self-confidence. When you have self-confidence, then you, you'll think that, okay, I have to continue. I have to continue. This meditation is really work. It's changing something. So here, that's here the Buddha said, which has self-confidence and stillness of mind without thinking and examining thought. No thinking thought, no examining thought. Only joy, happiness, and unification of mind. These three factors will be the present in your mind, then you attain the second jhana. He considered this and understand it thus. The second jhana, second tranquility inside stage of meditation is the conditioned and intentionally produced. But whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject to cessation. You see, these things is repetition, repeating, repeating. Why did the Buddha repeat first time, second time, and third time? Why did he do that? Do you know why? The one thing, you know, first time when he gave the Dhamma talk, during the Buddha's time, when he got enlightenment, the first Dhamma talk I said, the Buddha was thinking that I should not give my, my Dhamma talk to the people, I should not teach, you know, because of the king of the dairies, so he invited him, that's why he decided to teach. So he taught to the uneducated people, the farmer and other people, different types of people, you know. And when he gave Dhamma talk, 
first time and they couldn't catch of course even we have uh, the in this world there are different kind of people you know some people can catch one to three and some people cannot do that and second time he gave his talk again and oh it's better than before and then third time got it you see so that's why first time whatever he said and second time again repeat and third time again repeat you know when before i come in here when i saw first time second and third time i i keep some place i don't want to study that but after coming here when i started listening to mato from bantu we when he gave the beautiful comment then i understood this is really helpful so from that time i started reading reading more i read more become the clear to me you know so that's why i always say i am not too intelligent <laughs> so first time i cannot catch you know or second time i have to read again and third time i have to read again then it's become clear ah this is better now okay the second jhana the but whatever is condition and intentionally produce is impermanent of course the when you attain the base of infinite consciousness that moment you it become much much clear how everything is arising and passing away arising and pass <coughs> passing away so if he is steady in that he attain the distractions of things even second jhana you have potential to attain nibbana in this sutta said okay first jhana first jhana you couldn't do that it's okay but second jhana you have potential to attain nibbana the the venerable ananda explain here but if he does not attain the distractions of the ten because of their desire for the dhamma the delight in the dhamma then with the distractions of the five lower fetters he becomes one do to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes suddhavasa brahma realm and there he or she can attain nibbana arahanship and there i attain final nibbana without ever returning from the world so from the lo- that world you should not come back again to the human world you will attain nibbana there this too is one thing proclaimed by the blessed one who knows and sees accomplished and fully enlightened wherein if a monk abides diligent ardent and resolute his unliberated mind comes to be liberated his undistracted tens come to be distracted and he attained the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before so this is the second jhana do you have any question about the second jhana is it clear because i want you to do I, I actually my way is a little bit different i want you when you come the masuka or map in at my center in, in new york brahma vihara so i want you to understand everything about the jhana meaning of the jhana and what wh- whatever you listen to dhamma talk here you experience right now here so that way you get something from here from the masuka you know you come empty hand hand is empty but after coming here you t- you got something then you can go back at home and you can practice continuously so first jhana is clear and second jhana is clear right so second jhana only thinking and examining thought savita ka savichara stop rising and piti sukha ekagata joy happiness and unification of mind arise in your mind no hindrances then you attain second jhana right now we are going to learn the third jhana what is the characteristic of the third jhana again with the fading way of joy 
among a world in equanimity, mindful and fully aware, still feeling happiness with the body, he enters upon and abides in the third jhana, an account of which in noble ones announce. He has a pleasant abiding, who has equanimity and is mindful. So he considered this and understand it thus. This third jhana, third tranquility inside stage of meditation, samatha and vipassana jhana is conditioned and intentionally produced. But whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent subject to cessation. If he is steady in that, he attained the distractions of the ten. Even in the third jhana, he had potential to attain Nibbana. You see, very clearly mentioned here. So, how will you understand you attain third jhana? Joy, stop arising. Joy will not, will not arise. Five hindrances absent. You have only Sukha, Ekagata, happiness and unification of mind. These two Dhamma will be present in your mind. You attain the third jhana. Is it clear? Right? So you attain third jhana. So he has said, but if he, if, if he does not attain the distractions of the taints because of that desire of the Dhamma, if you have little bit desire, you will not attain arahan, but you attain anagami. If you have little bit desire, that delight in the Dhamma, even about the truth, if you have little bit desire. So let me explain here one thing. When you attain the stream mantra, so you will, of course, there are some people that don't believe that reborn, you know, in according to Buddhist scriptures. So, but I explained already in the first sutta, Dhamma Chakka Bhavattana Sutta. So, because of the karma, we are coming here, going another realm, another realm, another realm, you know. So, when you attain the stream mantra, you will reborn seven times only in the human realm or in the heaven realm. Within seven times, you will attain Nibbana. And that time, three things will destroy from your mind. What are they? Sakkayaditi, Silabhata Paramasa, and Visigicca. Sakkayaditi means, this is me. This is I am. This is mine. You will think that, you know, I don't have. There is no me. There is no my. There is no I am. Such kinds of thought will arise in your mind. You know? And second things, silapata paramasa. Silapata means righteous rituals. If I do righteous ritual, okay, I went to one monastery and do the incense, a candle, and then, you know, you did some sort of chanting, okay. When you practice meditation, attain the Sutra Mantra, you know, if I do this, such kinds of righteous rituals, it will not lead the Nibbana. Such a confidence will arise in your mind. And then third one, doubt disappear. No doubt in your mind, you become a stream mantra that time. These three things will be completely destroyed from your mind. And when you attain the Sakkadagami, the once eternal, 50% anger gone. You know? And then 50% Greed gone. So, of course, you'll have a little bit of delusions that time. And when you attain anagami, 
hundred percent greed gone. No hatred. You know, you'll have little bit delusions. Because of that, you will not be able to attain Nibbana, Arahanship. Okay? So here, Dhamma. You see, here said, only if you have little bit desire for the Dhamma, you will not be able to attain Nibbana, arah Arahanship. You will, attain, you will become Anagami, the non-returner. Then, with the restrictions of the five lower fairs, he becomes one due to the reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes, that means Anagami. And they attain the final Nibbana, highest peace, whether without ever returning from the world. So this too is one thing proclaimed by the Blessed One, who knows and sees a com a com a complete and a full enlightened, wherein if a man awards diligent, ardent, resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undestroyed things come to be destroyed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So now how many jhanas you got? Three. So you attain first jhana, second jhana, third jhana. I don't know how about your experience. They also know that. Right? So you are going to give the interview to him. He came to me. Bhante, do you want to take interview? I said, no, you, you can do that. Because I, I live on May 4th. Thursday, you know, I have the big ceremony on uh, May 7 at my center, Brahmavya Medicine Center, Buddha's birthday. More than 100 people will come. So that's why uh, I have to leave. But anyway, don't worry. Uh, according to the seniority, Buddha Nanda will be the leader, right? Do you want to be leader? <laughs> so you're the senior, ma senior one, right? Can you come here and then give them the 10 percent? <laughs> 10 percent? If you cannot, it's okay. We have the Dhammananda. Yeah. Right? Dhammananda will be there. No problem. We are like Sangha brother. Right? We are the, in the Kalayana Metta. Do you know? We are all the friend. This is loving kindness. Right? This is the loving kindness. If someone look me like this. No, this is not loving kindness. <laughs> this is the hatred. You are developing the hatred. <laughs> so you don't want to be hated. I a smile, you also have a smile. You a smile, make others to be a smile. You know, when I was uh, at, at uh, my center, people come every Friday for practicing meditations. 30 minutes practice, 30 minutes talk, and 30 minutes Q&A. So when someone call me, hello, I want to come, you center for practicing meditation. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, it's okay. No, fine. I, it's okay, fine. So seven o'clock I do the I open the door and then they come. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I am fine. And I smile. And they are not smiling. They are, I couldn't see them. I mean, smiling their face. And then, okay, let's have a seat, please. And that's it. And I gave talk first, 30 minutes. I told them, well, you come here for practicing meditation, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, so what you have, you have to listen to my talk first. I'll give that uh, 30 minutes talk, then 30 minutes practice. Then when I was talking, you have to smile, smile, smile. You know, he listened very carefully. What is talking about a smiling? <laughs> smiling? I said, a smiling is the wholesome things. A smiling is the good things. You know, when you, if you are loving kindness practitioner, you must say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night first. You should not expect from others. If you expect from others, you are not practicing loving kindness meditation. <laughs> you know? So, whenever I go out, hello, how are you? And then some people, they don't talk, you know? Even they, they go, okay, this is his pain, this is not my pain, right? <laughs> so, why I have to take his pain in my, in, in my mind, you know? If, if you take his pain in your mind, 
you will be the miserable person. Right? So when somebody is angry, you just be quiet. Okay, he's suffering. You will be so compassionate to him. How he's suffering. So when you're too much angry, you see the, your blood, in the vein, your blood will run very fast. Very fast. You'll see the face become very ugly. You know, full of their like blood. You'll see that. So when the vein bust, you may get a stroke, heart attack, and then you may go to the hospital, and the next day say, okay, he died. <laughs> right? So why, why you have to smile? So in order to be angry, you know, so that's why you have to, when somebody angry, just you be quiet. So that way, this is the good medicine, the Buddha's medicine, you know. That's why in the morning we say, hate it, never, hate it, the number, the f number five, Dhammapada, hate it, by hatred. Hated never overcome by the hatred. So hated overcome only by the love. You know, so then after practicing meditations and before leaving, the big smile arose in their mind. Oh, now it's look better now. You see, I saw many people like that. That's why I always remember my teacher Bhante Vimala Ramsey advice. He said, go back to New York and teach American people. Don't think only Bangladeshi community, because I am from Bangladesh. You know already, right? Everyone, maybe not, no, uh, some people, they don't know. I was born in Bangladesh, so I am Bangladeshi man. Okay, and he said, don't think only Bangladeshi people. You are leaving my country, you have to help my country people. Okay, that's fine, Bante, thank you. Yeah. So most of the monks who come here in this country, they are too busy writing rituals, chanting, chanting, ceremony, ceremony. And they teach only their people. They are not thinking my country people. It's a great advice. I never forget that, that advice. I was thinking, okay, Bante, I really accept it your advice, and then I will apply in New York. So we established the meditation center there and open, open for everyone. My, my center actually come the different, different, from the different background, the people come and then they practice meditations. So I always remember what he said. This is the great advice. I got from him, you know. So that's why the, everyone church the good teacher for learning good things, you know. So that's why this Dhamma is really, really practically true that you can attain when you practice meditation and when you follow exactly that teaching. So yesterday, and Dalson was talking here, you know, please, um, someone questions him. Oh, I think the, you, what is his name? What, what is his name? Yes. No, I mean, what is your name? My name? Yeah. No, 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 I did, Dhamma name, Samanera name. Huh? What is it? Upekananda, Upekananda, right? Upekananda. So when you ask the Delson, um, you are talking about the Sutra, right? The Mohana Sutra. And I was thinking that, yeah, so he also answered actually very clearly. And I was thinking that I have to make him more clear. You know, when you practice, the whatever you practice in the past, so after coming here, we taught you loving kindness. Only practice only loving kindness. If you mix and max, okay, you are practicing anapana, breath in, breath out, and you practice mindfulness, and you are practicing loving kindness. Well, which one you want to do? 
okay you do this one five minutes and that one 10 minutes and that one uh, 15 minutes so you will see you will not get any benefit so you know, a lot of confusion will rest in your mind you know so that's why follow only one okay I have to, I am here I will practice only loving kindness so that way you'll see how you progress how will you attain the jhanas step by step by step by step so do only one okay don't practice uh, and the, the, at my center actually the one guy he also practice yoga so for, every friday when he come at my center he practice loving kindness and when he go back at home he practice yoga anapana uh, breath in breath out and mindfulness meditation i told him not to do that but i i didn't push him I said, okay if you think that my advice is good for you you follow or if you think that you should practice yoga do that you know it's up to you I, I don't want to push you okay don't do that don't do that I, i'm not going to say that so very with a loving kindness saying to all of you please practice only loving kindness meditation here so here i am going to explain all the stages through the loving kindness how many jhanas you will attain that so now i explain three right yeah. three jhana first jhana second jhana third jhana again among bait perverting one quarter with a man, mind imbued with loving kindness, likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above, below, around, and everywhere, and to all as to himself, he avoids the perver perverting the all encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abandoned, exalted, immeasurable, with a hostility, with a ill will. Okay. He considered this and understand it thus. This deliverance of mind through loving kindness is conditioned and intentionally produced. But whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent subject to cessation. If he is steady in that, he attained the destructions of the taints, even in the fourth jhana. So when you practice, you already attained the third jhana, that's fine. You still read loving kindness to yourself 10 minutes and to your spiritual friend 20 minutes or maybe more than 20 minutes. If you sit one hour, just 10 minutes to yourself and the rest of time to, to your spiritual friend. And you attend first jhana, second jhana, third jhana. And then you'll see later on, sukha, happiness, stuff rising. Happiness will not arise in your mind. So, what will be the remain? Only one, the unification of mind, ekagata. So that time you you feel your feeling from here, it will go to the center of your head, the top of your head. Your feeling it will go to the top of your head. So some meditator, where is my feeling? Where is my feeling? When they are in first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, wow, this is very good. I had never experienced that. This is really something good, you know. I want it continuously. But later on, when that feeling to go to top, the top of their head, and they cannot find where is my feeling. But when they pay attention very carefully and then just aware of, aware of it, then say, oh, feeling is the top of their head. Please don't press down. This is the gold sign for you. So let it be there. So that time, happiness will not arise and then your mind will be very, you'll get equanimity. You know, your mind balance. So you will be, you will attain the fourth jhana. Okay? So here the blessed one said, the Buddha said, this is, this, um, Abiding is the call beautiful abiding. That one is called beautiful abiding. Okay? So you let in the fourth jhana. So when you attain the fourth jhana, then you are advanced meditator. 
you are advanced meditator now. So one way I said, David is my teacher. Do you know why? When I came here, even David doesn't know, because I went to Bante V. How about your meditation? Then I explained him. Okay, my experiences. Okay, go to David. Why? Why I have to go to David? He said, I told you, go to David. Then what, what should I tell him? He said, tell him, teach me six direction meditation. And I, I went to him in the, in the corner of the, the, the uh, kitchen, uh, kitchen, you know. David, David, why do I? He said, what, what, what happened? Okay, Bhante sent to me, Bhante told me, okay, go to David. And I went to him. Okay, could you teach me how to practice six direction? Bhante told me to ask from you. <laughs> oh, he's really very good guy. He explained me very nicely, you know. In the sutta mentioned first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, I couldn't understand anything. You know, the first quarter means what? I don't know. And David said, okay, forward, first quarter, backward, second quarter, and then left side, third quarter, right side, fourth quarter, above, and then what? <laughs> Fifth, fifth, fifth quarter, and then below sixth quarter. This is called six directions. This is the six direction meditation. And then what about the all direction? How will I practice all direction? I don't know. And he said, "Okay, Bhante, remember candle. This is the candle, right? Candle is lighting the all direction. Try to visualize in front of you, right?" And then when you try to visualize in front of you, because your feeling is here, try to visualize in front of you, and then you radiate loving kindness, your directions, lies, lighting, all directions. Very nice explanation. <laughs> That's why I said David is my teacher. You know? <laughs> I, when he went to my center the, the last year, and I said, I spoke in Bengali, actually. I said, David is one of my teachers because I learned six direction meditation from him. That's why I, I respect him as my teacher, you know. So exactly the same. When you attend the food jhana, just try to visualize one candle in front of you. Then you, see, you first, your radiation will go from here because it flings top of your head. So you cannot practice anymore to yourself and to your spiritual friend. Done. Because you are advanced meditator. Right? So what do you have to do? You have to do the six direction. So I heard somebody said yesterday how to practice the six direction. So when you are advanced meditator, so sit down and then from here, your radiation will go f forward five minutes. May all living beings be happy, peaceful, free from suffering, free from danger, free from difficulties. You'll see from forward five minutes. Okay? And then from here, you'll go backward five minutes. And left side, five minutes. From here, it'll go. <coughs> And then right side, five minutes, and above five minutes, from here to up, and then from here to down, five minutes. Then all direction. Try to visualize candle in front of you, then your radiation will go. And you'll see when your mind is very sharp and very clear, you'll see expansion will occur slowly to occur. All directions, it will go. You'll experience that. Right? So when you, when you, you still practice in loving kindness, even six direction. So when you attend the six, when you attend the fourth jhana, you know, somebody asks, Bhante, can I relate loving kindness to my wife, to my mother, to my sister, to my husband? But we said at the beginning, don't do that. Because you are a beginner. When you attend the food jhana, 
then you can radiate loving kindness to your father, to your mom, to your brother, to your sister, you know, to your husband, to your wife, one by one, one by one, you can, you can radiate loving kindness. Because at that time, you are, your mind is very, very balanced, you know. You are in the fourth jhana. Then you do the sixth direction and all direction. So when you do, because you are still practicing loving kindness. First jhana, second jhana, third jhana and fourth jhana. Through the loving kindness. Okay? So after doing the sixth direction, then you will see your meditation will change from loving kindness to the compassion. So how do you feel that? David wrote a wonderful book, The Path to Nibbana. In that book, it very beautifully explained. Your mind will be very soft, like cotton. Okay? Did you touch the cotton? How soft? So your mind will be also soft. And then when you sit one hour, two hours, three hours, you see chair is falling down. Wow, when I was sitting there, I still remember. You know, chair is falling down. It's compassion, meditation. So when you experience that, when you feel that, then you have to change your meditation. No more loving kindness, compassion, meditation. Exactly the same six direction, compassion. Okay, the forward five minutes, backward five minutes, left side five minutes, right side five minutes, above five minutes, below five minutes, and all direction, compassion. It will go automatically, it will happen automatically. So that time your mind will be auto, you know, so you will experience that. That's why, you know, you must experience that. So, somebody, if somebody don't have any experience, you know, in the insight, they cannot explain to others. They have only the academic background. But if don't practice insight, what happened, they will not be able to explain. Like, you know, the, the commentary, his commentary, who written down commentary, that we see the Magga, the path of purification, you will see concentration, 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 right? So after coming here, I don't use anymore that word, concentration. We use the collectedness, your mind is collected. Okay, so when the Han, when the Buddha passed away, after 500 years, then the Sutta written down in the Fourth Buddhist Council in Sri Lanka. So that time also, there were Arahan. No commentary. Only the Arahan recited and they written down. So, after one uh, 500 years and 1000 1, years later, the commentary came, commentary written down by the Buddha Gaza, Dhammadipa, all those commentators. But some of them were not practitioner. So they, they uh, added, you know, Samatha. 40 kinds, vipassana, 8 kinds, 8 kinds of samatha meditation, and uh, sorry, 40 kinds of samatha meditation, and then vipass, uh, uh, 8 kinds of vipassana meditation. This one we learn from the Visiddhimanka, from the path of purification. But when you read the sutta, no. You cannot find in the index if you check that. Samatha Vipassana. Samatha Vipassana. Tranquility inside. Tranquility inside. There is one Sutta. 149. You can check tonight. The middle line saying, I am saying the Sutta number, section number 10. What did the Buddha say? 
samata tranquility and insight evenly yoke together yeah evenly yoke together that means samata and insight work together no separation the middle majjhima nikaya sutta number 149 section number 10 you just read there you should read like me you know i after listening bhante's talk i went to my cabin and check whether he's he's he speak the truth or not <laughs> so so you should also check so eventually i i really accepted his teaching you know so again so this is the oh this why i already explained about the loving kindness and now we are going to explain the compassion right so again among a birds pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with altruistic joy i don't i don't want to use this word here you see altruistic joy and then sympathetic joy and joy only what is the difference so here altruistic joy and sympathetic joy means okay subhananda already attained for instance but i don't know his mind he attained the fourth jhana he said bhante you know i attained already fourth jhana then i was so happy happiness arose in my oh this is really good joy arise in my mind this is really good because my friend told me he attain something and he shared to me i was happy this is sympathetic joy this is altruistic joy but when you meditate after practicing meditation you you are practicing compassion meditation six direction and then you meditate 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 then you will experience how consciousness is arising passing away arising passing away arising passing away you will see that wow this is something special i never experience such a things is arising one snap of the finger 100000 consciousness arising passing away arising passing away arising passing away you will see the link of dependent origination that time you know so when you see the link of dependent originations and vibrations of the the consciousness you uplift a joy arise in your mind this is called joy this is uplifted joy this is not the first jhana experience joy second jhana experience joy third jhana experience joy and a fourth jhana experience joy this joy is special is call uplifted joy so when that joy will arise and no hindrance is there you will attain the mudita is call joy so first through the first jhana second jhana third jhana and fourth jhana you just practice loving kindness and then after doing the sixth direction then your mind change automatically to the compassion then you still doing the compassion meditation that stage is called the base of infinite space so the base of infinite space your meditation is compassion so when you are practicing compassion meditation then you are practicing continuously you are very aware on it you know your mind is very clear and then you the sixth direction your compassion is just radiating then you will see you meditation will change again from compassion to the joy that one is called mudita so an uplifted joy you will experience okay so that moment you will see everything is impermanent there is nothing permanent rising and passing away rising and passing away rising and passing away if you say hey stop no will not listen to you 
We don't listen. It's arising very quickly. One snap of the finger, 100,000 consciousness, arising, passing away, arising, passing away. Then you see everything is impermanent, impermanent. So what is impermanent? Suffering. And there is no I, no my, no myself. Impersonal. Three characteristics you experience that stage and uplifted joy arises in your mind. You attend the mudita, joy. So that is what is called the base of infinite consciousness. So base of infinite consciousness, that one is the joy meditation, mudita meditation. So how many you got loving kindness, compassion, and then joy? You got three, right? And again, now how do you practice the joy meditation, mudita? Again, six direction, forward, backward, left side, right side, above, below, and all direction. You do the six direction again. So after doing that, you will you'll experience there is nothing. The base of nothingness, the Buddha said. Nothing is there. Everything is like empty. <laughs> you know what happened? Uh, when my my was little bit wandering, I went to Bhante. I explained the last talk, and he told me, advised me. Okay, wake up at three o'clock, and practice meditation at the cabin. I, I did one sitting from three to seven seven o'clock. Because seven o'clock, tang tang tang, breakfast time, and then I came here for taking breakfast. So, so first day, I couldn't practice very well because I feel so sleepy. I never practiced three, wake up three o'clock in my life, monk life. <laughs> I never do that. <laughs> I never do that. Only damasuka. <laughs> so in the second time, I after uh, practicing just a little bit, I went to bed and sl slept, and I went to the bante. How about your meditation? No good. Why? You know, three o'clock, I never woke up in the past, and then I felt so sleepy. And he said, okay, try to, today. Don't worry. He always encouraged me, try to, not today. And then I wake up, oh, meditation is good. One sitting, four hours, you know? And then I was thinking, I couldn't see anything there. Because that time I didn't understand it, that stage. Buddha said nothingness, nothing, the base of nothingness, the base of nothingness. I don't know what is the meaning of that. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> you know? So I couldn't say anything. Just sitting. You know? I broke up my meditation. Because I couldn't see. I just wasting my time. <laughs> you know? And then went to Bhante. How about your meditation? Do you know what happened, Bhante? I was Practicing, practicing. I couldn't say anything and I broke up. Don't do that. Next time. Why? What happened? This is the good sign for you. This is the good sign for you. Buddha already said in the Sutta, the base of nothingness. You'll have a lot of equanimity. You will not see anything there. So how will I practice? Just watching your mind. Watching your mind. Watching your mind. So when your mind is just a little bit unbalanced, just use the six as air. And again, just watching your mind, watching your mind. So from that stage, you have potential to in Nibbana. So, okay, thank you. Then I continuously practice that. So from that time, it's become very clear to me. Yes, what a Buddha said here, the base of Nothingness, that stage is called the equanimity. So when you attain that stage, your vipassana inside will be very, very strong. You see, first jhana, samatha vipassana, also second jhana is more than that, samatha vipassana, and third jhana also, samatha vipassana, the tranquility and insight, 
and the fourth jhana also tranquility inside you see your tranquility inside is increasing step by step step by step so when you attain the equanimity that stage your vipassana insight will be very strong very strong so this is called the brahma vihara so brahma vihara means what <laughs> you know some of my people think that brahma means the only brahmin name and vihara means temple monastery they think that way that they have no idea <laughs> Brahma Vihara, the, I gave that name by, di, by discussing with Bhante V, you know. Well, so when we were taking the lunch together in the dining hall, Bhante, what do you think? Should I give my center name Brahma Vihara? What do you think? Oh, this is the good name. <laughs> I approve. Okay, carry on. Uh -huh, thank you. Then I did. You see, because I am practicing Brahma Vihara meditation. So and I'll teach to the others Brahma Vihara meditation. So the center will be Brahma Vihara. So Bhante when approved, then we did. See? So now you got loving kindness. So to the loving kindness, you can attend the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana. Right? And then the base of infinite space, compassion. The base of infinite consciousness, joy. The base of Nothingness, equanimity, upekha. So these four are called Brahma Vihara. So when you're just watching, watching, watching your mind, then you'll see from that stage, you let in the base of neither perception nor non-perception. It's not here. My tamatak is done. It's not here, but I still am going to explain to you so, when you attain that, the base of neither perception nor non-perception, then you will see that feeling, perception and consciousness. These three things, the feeling, we call him Pali, Vedana, Sanya, and chetana. Vijnana means the, fe uh, the uh, feeling, vedana. Feeling, perception, and consciousness. These three dhamma, these three things stop rising. When it stop rising, then you will see the huge the con joy will arise in your mind that you never experience in human life. This is the first experience. And that joy may last for one week, two weeks, one month, two months. So that time you will attain this Srimantra, the path of Srimantra. Okay? So when you again continuously practice, 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 then second time again cessation will occur. So you will attain the fruition of Istrimantra. <coughs> so that time your foundation is very strong. You never fall down. But when you attain the path of Istrimantra, you may lose it. You know, but when you attain the fruition of Istrimantra, your foundation is very strong. Very strong. So you will reborn only three, seven times and then I didn't need Bana. You know? So from that stage. So I think I explained everything, right? Right? Okay. So now the end of the sutta. End of the sutta. Because I don't want to repeat again and again, it will be too long. So the end of the sutta, what the uh, householder Dasama said to the Venerable Ananda after listening his talk, after listening Ananda, Ananda's talk. What did he say? He said, when Venerable Ananda has spoken, the householder Dasama Anathapindi, uh, uh, Attaganagara said to him, Venerable Ananda, justice, if a man is seeking one entrance to a hidden treasure, 
came all at once upon eleven entrances to a hidden treasure. So too, while I was seeking one door to the deathless, I have I have uh, I have come all at once to hear of eleven doors to the deathless, just as if a man had a house with eleven doors, and when that house caught on fire, he could flee to safety by any one of these eleven doors. That means this house has eleven doors, right? If fire is somewhere fire happened so how do you go, go out you can go you can use any one door right so exactly the householder is saying to the venerable ananda so i can flee to safe, safe, safety by any one of these 11 doors to the deathless venerable sir these sectarians will even seek a teacher's fee for their teachers you see, he learned something from Venerable Ananda. I have to give back something. I have to donate something. You know? So, and he was very lucky what he's saying here. Why shouldn't I make an offering to the Venerable Ananda? Because I learned something from him. And then I should give something to him. He was thinking. The uh, householder Dasama is thinking. Then the householder Dasama of Attakanagara assembled the Sangha of monks from Pataliputta and Visali. So he called many Sanghas. It's with more than four. Many Sanghas he invited and he offered them food, you know. But the Benarabana is special because he listened the matter from him. So he gives the food and other stuffs, other things to the other uh, Sangha. And with his own hands, he served and satisfied them with the various kinds of good food. He presented a pair of cloth to each monk, you know, to the each monk, he gave the one set of rope to all monks. And he presented a triple rope to the Venerable Ananda, what does it mean, triple? Outer rope, upper rope, and then lower rope. We call triple, okay? So one set means, there's some novices get the only one set. So one is the lower rope, another one is the upper rope. You got it, right? You got only two. So that one is called the one pair of ropes. But triple means, yeah, yes, I know, I remember you. Yeah, so he has one outer rope, and this is called upper rope, and this that this is called the lower rope. It's called triple. Okay, so so for the venerable Ananda, special, he got triple rope, and had a dwelling worth five hundred core. So one core equal to ten thousand pieces of gold, built for the venerable Ananda. So he was lucky. He, you see, Dasama, uh, householder Dasama also built the temple. <laughs> you know, so I feel jealous. You know, when I see that. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to get a, one uh, monastery like him. You know. <laughs> so he was so lucky. So that's why Buddha said, "Please don't crave." Let me explain you one story. The Venerable Sariputra was a very intelligent monk. What is my friend? This one, right? Yes. Uh, this one donated by uh, David. He said, this is for you. That's right. <laughs> so, you see, the, when the Buddha was preaching, Buddha was giving Dhamma talk, the Sariputra was close to him. He was fanning. Buddha is giving Dhamma talk, Sariputra is fanning, you know. So, giving Dhamma talk, giving Dhamma talk. And Sariputra was thinking that, wow, Buddha is giving Dhamma talk, so wonderful. He doesn't have any attachments on it. 
when he experienced that, then that moment he attained arahanship. Sariputta attained arahanship. Only he experienced that. He was failing. And then Buddha is giving Dhamma talk. He's listening very carefully. Oh, Buddha doesn't have any craving. Because some people, you know, oh, my Dhamma talk become very good now. <laughs> some speakers feel that way, right? Some the, the monks, you know, <laughs> how about my Dhamma talk today? Proudness arose in their mind. But uh, Venerable Sariputra was thinking, ah, oh, Buddha is very good. He's giving Dhamma talk. He doesn't have any craving, no attachments. That he is giving beautiful Dhamma talk. And then Sariputta attained Arahanship when he experienced that. You see how intelligent monk? You see, so that's why so you should not you should not be uh, crave something. Craving means you already know. I don't like it. I like it, I don't like it in mind. So when sensual desire arises, I like it. So when you develop it, that means your meditation go down. And then when hatred rise, oh, I don't like it, but it's still arising, this is craving. So think, Buddha said, please overcome that craving from your mind. If you can overcome craving from your mind, then you attain Nibbana. <coughs> right, question. Yes. Eleven doors, as I said, that this that like he house, he explained. This is the simile. This is the simile. We call him Pali uh, Upama. Simile. He just give the simile. This is the house. This house has eleven doors, right? Eleven doors. So when it's fire here, so how do you run? How do you go safely? So you have to use one door, right? So if this house have fire, then among the 11 doors, I can use one. I can run. I can save myself. So exactly whatever you give Dhamma talk, you know, I feel so happy. I understood all the jhanas. First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Compassion, joy, equanimity. I'm really grateful to you. So I, I save myself now after listening your talk so i have to offer you one monastery this is your <laughs> and then i offer you triple ropes because you give me wonderful dhamma talk you know so that's why i always remember my teacher advice the bante we you know even my talk most of the time i said about him because i learned a lot of things from him after coming here. One way I can, I can say that I studied before coming here 14 years in Burma at International Theravada Buddhist Mission University, you know. So, and in Thailand, four years. But we studied the Sutta, Abhidhamma, and then uh, Samatha, Vipassana. A lot of confusion arose in my mind. So after coming, as I said the last time, when he was giving Dhamma talk, I listened his talk from YouTube, you know, then he just read in the book. This is not Dhamma talk. In Burma, we saw, you know, monks sit down very nicely and then they are giving Dhamma talk very beautiful, you know. They never make note because they are Dhammacharya. Dhammacharya monk, Dhamma plus Acharya. Acharya means teacher. Dhamma means one who is the teacher of the Dhamma is called Dhammacharya. So uh, most of the monks, Dhammacharya, they can give beautiful Dhamma talk. You know? So, but for me, <laughs> as I said, I couldn't memorize all those things. It's a lot of things, you know? So I just make note a little bit and then give Dhamma talk. So when I listen Bhante's we talk, he's reading, Ewam me sutang, dasse vai heart, and din blah blah, some other things. Now see, he's just reading the book. This is not Dhamma talk, because I used to listen in Burma, Thailand. They never look, read the book. 
This is just reading the book. You know, this is, this is something different. And then first time, second time, I put my phone one place, I sleep. And then later on, I started listening, listening. And then I saw, wow, he's giving some beautiful comment and his practical experiences. Then I woke, I woke up. I was thinking, okay, I started listening, 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 his talk almost every day before going to bed. So, and after coming here, then I saw he read the sutta one day, one sutta, another day, another sutta, another day, another sutta. So, I was sitting here, he, he sat here. <coughs> then I, something I saw that something very different very different that I never experienced 14 years, last 14 years, you know. Then I decided, okay, this is, this is the only one way that I have to practice. So from that time, I stopped practicing the old practice. I am doing only this one. I practice myself this and I teach to <laughs> others this one because this is very comfortable for me. You know, so that's why which one is work for you, do only that one. We saw here that people came from the different places, you know. When they come at the meditation hall, they practice loving kindness meditation. And when they go to the cabin, they play the chanting. The two things doesn't work together. So Bhante always said, okay, no chanting, not listening chanting, only do this meditation. Why did he say that? Because it really works. He wants everyone, you come here, get something from here. Exactly the same. I also teach that way to the people. You come here, you must get something from here. Otherwise, you are just wasting your time. You know? Because I said last, uh, first Dhamma talk, I think, now first, second Dhamma talk, right? I said, one guy, he was sitting there and he couldn't, he couldn't develop a loving kindness. His mind was very strong. And another monk also, uh, we were talking actually before, uh, before coming here, before giving, uh, starting Dhamma talk. One monk, he was very, very strict. <coughs> very strict Vinaya, very strict discipline role. He eat arms bowl, he uh, use the arms bowl, and then he, he doesn't touch money, you know. He's very strict. So he came here for practicing meditations. Bhante, we sit, sit here and I sit there. He was sitting here. You know, Bhante gave the Dhamma talk and he said about the touching money. And okay, people offer money, and then I follow David. This money is for the center. So, you know, he was talking something why monks use the money, monks tax the money, why monks don't eat dams bowl. He started complaining us. We were quiet, you know, and Bhante said, quiet, don't talk too much. And then when we went to him, uh, for giving an interview, he said, do you know, that monk is too strict, but I don't think so, he will stay, he, he is, is stays a monk life longer. Within short time, he will disrupt. I think he has something, you know. What he said, it became true. After six months, he disrupt. So when he came here, Bhante taught him to practice loving kindness meditation. He said, I cannot bring loving kindness, what should I do? He said, well, he was shouting. You know, when he went to the, the uh, for inter inter interview, you know, he was shouting and uh, we were, huh, what happened? What is going on? What he shouted? Bhante was quiet. <laughs> he, was, he said, no, I'm saying the right thing. See, you, you have to, your mind have to be sharp. You are too serious. You're taking it too seriously. No, loving kindness have to be very soft, you know. Smile. 
I never see his smiling when he came here. I never see, you know. He's always very serious, you know. And I said to Bante, Bante, did you see his smile? <laughs> no, I also didn't see that. <laughs> he also didn't see. <laughs> so he didn't see. <laughs> I didn't see his smile, you know. So that's why the smiling is the most important. When you smile and you practice, you all, you uh, you attend the first jhana, second jhana, then it's a brightness from your face. The brightness will rise from your face. Lightness will rise from your face. You will see that. You can see from each other's. You know? So you feel that. So that's complexion, feasible. You know, a lot of things explain the suttas already. How you, exp how you feel when the people, you see the people face. You know? Okay, second question. <laughs> you see, I explained the eleven door and I went to another place. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, next, please. No, no, I was again with the door because if you, uh, the uh, householder asked just for one door to go to the bana and he gives him the eight jars, but it is eight doors where I never sleep. <laughs> but that's just curiosity. I mean, he just curiosity. used the simile, simile. He just okay, so it was not, uh, the number well, of doors was not... Uh, that less. Bodhi actually does explain it. Okay. Can, see it? Let me, can I read the note? Yes, please. Okay, could you read, please? Yeah, there, the eleven doors to the deathless are the four jhanas, the four Brahma Viharas, and the first three immaterial attainments used as basis for the development of insight and attainment of arhatship. That means Nibbana. Yeah, Nibbana. I, that one in, in my paper, I think, don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you. yeah. So this, this one actually, uh, this sutta edited by Bhante V. So I love his uh, editions. He changed some word here. So he, lo he loves the easy word. I also love easy word. <laughs> you know, I, 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 don't, I don't understand when something is complex. It's very difficult for me. So that's why I always um, read what he changed in the suttas. He did a lot of uh, changes in, in the suttas. So I think uh, I couldn't find it, but he got it. Thank you. Really? Yeah, and he would usually just smile and say, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's why he's not here. He deleted. He deleted from here. <laughs> that's why I couldn't find what he's asking that. So, okay, go ahead, please. Um, so, uh, I'm not understanding that you enter your stream entry that you had seven human, more, no more than seven human births. Right. Is that true? Is that you, so? Like, if I was to get, get if, you, if you were to get stream entry here, and then you went to a higher loka, and then came back, that would be actually you would be on your third birth. This is the the when you attend the stream entry, the fruition of the stream entry, you reborn seven times. So these seven times you may reborn, you will not reborn in the lower realm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you'll reborn only human realm, and then lower realm. That one means dear this realm. There are six kinds of heaven. Okay, so this uh, six uh, six kinds of the heaven plus and then human realm. You will reborn only seven times. So okay, so I'm just gonna run through a scenario here. So when you read that that uh, uh, what is that that map, you you'll see there. Okay. Um, so if a person so he, a person is uh, and gets stream entry to the bana. He or she dies, goes to a higher realm, gets more reborn there. Uh huh. Now you're talking. To, so then, and then comes back to Earth. Now is that the third 
Spirit life? Yes, the, it, it, yeah, that's what, this is the cycle of the rebirth. So it also, seven times, whether human being, okay, die. Am I reborn again, heaven? Or maybe from human to human? So actually, Who knows? We don't know. Right. So right? actually, it's, it's depend on his less, karma. Much less than seven, seven times. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, only seven times. After seven times, you are in Nibbana. Next. Oh, the sister always smiles. It's very good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really, I, from the beginning, I saw. She's really, you have to, have to say, a smile, right, sister? <laughs> yeah. So, keep, a smile means keep your mind light, pure, and agile. Develop wholesome. This is the teaching of the Buddha. You know? Okay, next question. My uncle, Buddha Nanda, please. Yeah. I say I have to go party. <laughs> <laughs> party me. Oh. <laughs> that means party. I am going to the party. <laughs> I don't know party. How to say in Pali? <laughs> I say party gassa me. Gassa me means go. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I was thinking that you will talk about uh, the, the base of nothingness. <laughs> because he experienced the base of nothingness. He often called me from Chicago and I, whenever he have questions. Very often. He is really a practitioner, good practitioner. You know, so Bhante. You know, when I, I, I'm sitting and practicing meditation, I don't want to reborn anymore. This is the last birth for me. <laughs> so what should, okay, please continue. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, I'm doing now. I experienced this, I experienced that, I experienced this, but sometimes I don't know. So he asked me, he called me, and then I answer for him. He's so happy. Right? Are you? My wife tells me I achieve the base of nothingness all the time. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so how, how do you... <laughs> what are you thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, so how did she understand that you are in the base of nothingness? <laughs> <laughs> so okay. <laughs> See, her understanding is different than than what you attain, right? <laughs> so you one is your experience is through the meditation, right? Can an air heart empty the garbage? <laughs> What did he say? Can an arahat empty the garbage? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All the time. All the time. Here, yeah. <laughs> Buddha never, Buddha said that actually most important is three things. Greed, hatred, and delusion. So people easily understand greed. What is greed? They already know that. And the hatred also know that. Delusion. People need to be confused about that. What delusion means? Delusion means one who doesn't understand the four noble truths. <clears throat> this is what the Buddha said. So greed very easy to understand, hatred very easy to understand, but delusion means when you don't have the knowledge, what is suffering, what is the cause of suffering, what is the cessation of suffering? Yes, cessation of suffering means Nibbana. Okay? And then, what is the path that leads to the cessation of suffering? That is the Eightfold Noble Path. So when you 
observe the Eightfold Noble Path all the time, you have potential to attain Nibbana within short time. Okay? Wow, no questions. So everybody understood. Yeah, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, in the first jhana, there's uh, thinking, right? Thinking and, and examining and thought. Examining thought. So it, it, wholesome, right? Wholesome thinking and examining thought. Savitaka savichara. So that means we can be in the first jhana while doing, uh, let's say, thinking stuff, like reading something. No, no, this is unwholesome. <laughs> this is not sa. Sa means wholesome. You see here, secluded, play, secluded from unwholesome states, mm. said. Secluded from unwholesome states, that means no unwholesome there. Mm. Develop wholesome, that means you are in the jhana. So for example, uh, when one is reading a sutta, one is thinking uh, and reading that, that... That one is reading knowledge. Mm. When you close your eyes, you meditate. And then when you walk in, doing walking meditations, and then you are radiating love and kindness to a special friend. Okay, another thing I want to explain actually. Uh, when you sit here one hour, or maybe th that this practice not less than 30 minutes. Okay, so if you sit, please sit at least 30 minutes. And then if you can sit more than that, this is good for you. And one hour, two hours, three hours, and if you can sit four hours, also good. And some practitioner can do that. And some practitioner cannot. You know, so when you sit on the chair, you can sit two hours, three hours. And <clears throat> after break up your meditations, then you, when you go out for doing practicing walking meditation, stay with your spiritual friend. When you are do, practicing walking meditation around the center. So that time, you don't radiate loving kindness to yourself. St start radiating loving kindness to your spiritual friend. So when you come back again, sit down and radiate loving kindness 10 minutes to yourself and then to your spiritual friend. Clear? Right? So do that way. No question, right? It's done. So, uh, I have one more talk on May 3rd, that will be my last talk, I don't know yet what, what I am going to talk. So, I have to think about tonight and that one will be my last talk. So, uh, what uh, David told me, you are going to uh, distro uh, on Saturday morning. We also we have the discussions with David and Dalson. So, if somebody want to stay as a monk, uh, novice like monk life forever or maybe for one month, two months, three months, uh, one year, Brahma Vihe meditation always welcome. <laughs> okay? Eating, sleeping, everything free. You just meditate. Okay? So I'm going to give my business card today to all of you. So, and then we actually need if you want to stay also here, contact with the David. We need the monastic monk for, for here. So if you have a lot of experience, you know, so you also can. We need also one monastic monk like Bhante V. Of course, I'll come here sometimes for, even though I am little monk, little knowledge, <laughs> I'll try to, to of to share my knowledge to all of you. Sometimes every year I'll come here uh, whenever I have chance. And then if you think that, okay, I should not destroy, maybe in the future I want to be monk forever, or maybe for one year, two years, three years, at Brahma Vihara Meditation Center, always welcome. You no need to worry about the food, no need to worry about the accommodation, nothing. You just stay, meditate, and teach to others. That's it. Okay? So that's why Bhante, we always told me, keep the precept, take care of the Dhamma. You no need to worry about the food, no need to worry about other things. Everything will come. 
And I was thinking, who will, who will help me? <laughs> so, deity will protect you because you are keeping the precept. It's true, sometimes, you know, people don't, they don't believe that. Who is the de deities? I never see the deities. Yeah, where is the deities? Even some of, some people in New York City, I don't believe deities. If there is no deities in the Sanyutta Nikaya, you see this, this, this big books translated by the, my teacher, Bhikkhu Bodhi. Bhikkhu Bodhi also my teacher, so from who I learned the Pali. You know, he translated these books very big. Here there is the Devata Vagga. So Devata means the deities. The Buddha taught only to the deities. Those all the suttas, not to the human being. You know? So if this is not the true, why do sutta is here? Right? So when I was here, you know, Bhante was giving Dhamma talk here. We were two dogs that time. One is the bear, another one is Jack. Jack, right? Rex. Rex, Rex. Yeah, one is Rex. So, many students here, they would always say at that time, Sister Christian wasn't here. And then I was here. So, peop, the, all the students are listening to Dhamma talk, Bhante is giving, Dhamma talks, you know. And then beer, just a big one, you know. Hmm. Every day he come to listen to Dhamma talk. I never believed before, you know. I just uh, read, read the book and then learn the story from the book. So after coming here, the bear came over there. He said, Bhante said, who is this? Oh, bear. And then Bhante said, give him the motto. Give him the motto. And rest, uh, the bear, he went that, that side. And who is this? Ah, he's, he was still a bear. Okay. And then he's giving the matak. Then he again. Oh, he wants to come. He wants to listen to the matak. Okay, a bit. Go open the door. <laughs> and then he opened the door, you know. And then he came here. <sighs> like this. Came here. And very nicely. He listened to the matak. Very quiet. Wow, it was very amazing. I never forget that. Even animal came to listen to my talk. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. He never did, didn't disturb anyone. So then Bandha said, you know, the Dhammasuka, around the Dhammasuka, the deities always protect us. When I listened to him, and I felt that it's really true. Do you know why? Because all of you observe the precept. So deities need their merit. They always come here for receiving the merit from us. We keep the precept and then we meditate. We all the time wholesome thought, wholesome mind. We develop, develop, develop. We gain a lot of merit. And dear is no. Wow, Dhamma Sukha have. Wonderful. People are practicing Dhamma. So we should go there and then receive the merit from them. That's why at the end of the talk, we share the merit. And they are coming here. They really want the merit. You see? So animal come listening Dhamma talk. And then deities come for listening Dhamma talk and receive the merit from us and they protect us. So when I go from here to the monastery zone, monastery area. I never scare. The flash light. Yesterday, David, oh, I'm dead. Do you want me to write you? No, it's okay. 
I study for four months, ten days. Dhamma talk finish, more than two hours. Bande dhamma talk, you know, dark everywhere. And I used to flashlight and go slowly. I never scared because I feel that around the dhamma sukha, the good deities protect us. Good deities protect the meditators. Good deities protect the center. I feel that way. This is my experience. I'm sharing. I don't know. Maybe you have different. So that's why the what Buddha gave a talk here to the deities. You know, everything in the here inside. Devata Vaga. Devata means deities. So all the suttas he delivered to the deities, not to the people. You know, but you know when I, when we give the talk. People house sometimes people they don't they don't believe you know why they don't believe that because they don't have knowledge of the Dhamma they never study Buddhism they they think that they are they are like scientists they think themselves you know they are like scientists and they studied about the science. So, so that way people will never understand. Buddhism is very deep, very deep. So when you practice yourself, then you can find the truth. You can understand it yourself. That's why the first day I said, there is no belief in Buddhism. No belief. Buddhism is the way of life. Ehi pasiko, come and see my teaching and when you after seeing that if you think this is the good for you you try to understand and after understanding practice it so after practicing if you think that this is really work so please continue if you think that it doesn't work for me please leave freedom freedom so this is buddhism all right Okay, so if no questions, I think we can share the uh, share the matter right now. So big books, a lot of suttas. So I'm going to answer your questions uh, because I have to find uh, from the sutta. It's all in the Majjhima Nikaya. There is one sutta I'm going to check tonight, and then tomorrow you'll get a, uh, your your question ans your, your answer. What was the sutta number tonight? Fifty two from Majjhima Nikaya. Attaga Nagara Sutta from Majjhima Nikaya. So this Sutta is very wonderful actually. So you can share the merit now together. Okay, let us share the merit <coughs> together please. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fearless track fearless be. May the grief be shed all grief and the may all be find relief. May all be share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting a space and earth, there was a nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May the long protect the Buddha's dispensations. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Just died. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he said low power. Just, well, you see, deities protect us. The deities protect us. Okay, so uh, before I leave in, uh, could I come here and then give to the my.